Hello everyone, Nariman here, welcome to my channel. Today we want to talk about GitHub Copilot. If you are not familiar with it, well, uh, it's just an AI pair programmer. It will help you to write code easier by suggesting, let's say, a smart autocomplete. And overall, it will uh, make you more productive by writing a lot of boilerplate code. So if you didn't try it before, this video is not about how to install it or just showing what GitHub Copilot can do. In this video, I want to share with you the best tip I've learned during months of using Copilot. And that is how to provide Copilot with the right context. If you know anything about LLMs, you know that context is the most important thing. This means the more contextually rich uh, input or prompt you give to them, you will get a better answer. Unlike ChatGPT, where you need to provide all the data and all the context in the prompt, when you install GitHub Copilot in your preferred IDE, it will get the context from your project and your source code. But this overall context from your project is sometimes not good enough to get the best answer from Copilot. So please be with me until the end of the video so I can share with you a few tricks on how to provide GitHub Copilot some additional context and how to get the best answer out of it. Okay, so let's start. Um, as you can see, I created a Java project called Copilot Playground, and it's more or less uh, empty. I just added a complete readme file for it. And you can see that it's just the basic RESTful API, uh, which is for task management. And I specified each endpoint with like expected payload or expected response. As I said, it's just a basic CRUD repository. It will create a task with title, description, due date, and status. It will get all tasks, get a task by ID. It can also update a task and delete a task. And additionally, I also added a endpoint here that will do the filtering by the status of the task. So that's it, very simple. And the other thing that I did was just uh, divide the project into two packages called tasks and web, which uh, each of them has also some sub packages. First thing that we need to do is create a model called task. Let's just do it. So now uh, we want to see how Copilot can help us to write these boilerplate codes. For example, I have this task class. I want to have its properties. So let's see how the autocomplete goes. You can see that um, not much is happening because the project is basically empty. And uh, unfortunately also this autocomplete, it's um, not using your other open files. For example, I have this readme file, which is open here, but uh, when we are using this autocomplete, it's not uh, using the other files. It's just focusing on this file and there is not much here. So it basically cannot help you. There are a few things that we can do here. One is to provide a little bit more context, uh, for example, by copying it from this readme file, or let's say you are working in your company and you have a Jira task for it and it has a description, you can easily just copy the text and put it in that file that you want to start working on and you think that information is related and will help Copilot. So for example, let's do that. Let's copy this payload that uh, we have in readme file and then just like paste it here, like as a comment. And then let's go back to Copilot autocorrect. And you can see that now it can infer the meaning of that text and give you much more better uh, suggestions like all the fields are correct 
it will also saying that it can have a constructor with fields and without fields and many other so that is much better that is much better but it's still i would say a bit annoying that i need to you know copy and paste the stuff where all the things are present in the project so there is one other thing that you can do and it is to use uh, github copilot chat what i can do here is open this chat and then i can ask the copilot to add fields and constructor to this class <clears throat> let's see so you can see that it gave me a very good result like with all the fields that i want even it understood that it's a model and it needs an id uh, and the coolest thing is this part using the references so copilot here when you are using chat is able to get the context from other files like uh the readme which has the most information in it but you can also uh limit the information that copilot is using by giving it like the right files for example i can ask the same question add fields and constructor but i can click here to add references that i want and i can use readme and then ask this question it will more or less give the same result here but uh, what's the difference like in a big project uh, you can easily limit the more related files to copilot to get a better result so let's just copy this uh, output from the chat and paste it here and uh, yeah let's also clean up this comment the other thing that I want to do is to add some spring annotations to this class so it will be a spring entity and now I want to show you a new way how to provide context to copilot if you want to use some third-party library in your class or file it would be very helpful if you can just provide all the imports and includes that are necessary for it for example let me just copy some um, imports for uh, spring annotations and i will paste it here and now you can see that easily copilot knows that you need to put an entity annotation here and also regarding the id it will understand that this field is id and also needs a generated value and also a strategy for generation type so this will be also very convenient if you are using with any third party library and you know beforehand which things you are going to use you can just add the imports and then copilot would give you some very smart auto completions uh, also let's try out one more thing because you can see that id is here passed by um, constructor and we have the id here as generated value so this shouldn't be here let's remove this and see Copilot is suggesting first to use uh, an empty constructor and second, yeah, as I expected. Now even uh, Copilot found out that this uh, ID shouldn't be passed in the constructor and it's removed from here because it's a generated value. So you are seeing that the more we are giving it context, Copilot suggestions are becoming smarter and smarter. Okay, so since I'm not using Lombok in this project, let's just add all the other getters and setters for now and move to some other files let's say we want to create a repository 
I would call it tasks repository this time let's use a little bit different approach we can always also provide a sentence as a comment for example for this a SQL task repository using spring data JPA it's suggesting some imports more imports and then the exact thing that I wanted just an interface called task repository which is extending from JPA repository uh, the class and the model is just the spring MDT that we defined and this will be the ID which is long as you can see the ID that we defined was long so this is another approach uh, you this is more like using chat GPT yeah you are just uh, explaining everything on top of the class or the file uh, and you are providing more or less everything that you want and then uh, in the coming uh, auto completions you will get what you wanted okay let's get rid of that and also these uh, basic jpa repositories have their own crowd methods so they are extending it from this jpa repository so we don't have to create different methods for creating and deleting and stuff like that but what we can do is to ask um, copilot to generate a repository method for the sixth use case that we wanted if we go back here there was a use case that we needed to filter task by statuses so we can get help from copilot for this let's again use the trick that we tried before by providing a comment on a method level and see what will happen uh, let's say retrieve tasks by status and as you can see we are receiving a method which is called find by status and uh, it is completely following spring data's naming convention and it would work so yeah if we are we were not using a spring data which provides you some naming conventions and then converts them to sql for you it would also gave us some sql on top but here is not necessary and you can see copilot is completely getting what we want and it's amazing now let's write a unit test for this task repository and see how copilot can help us with that let's go to the tests and create a new package for it called repository and then here i will add a new java class called task repository test okay here we go here i want to one more time use github copilot chat and say to it it has also a command called tests i will use that and i want to add a task repository and also the task model as its references let's see what we will get so you can see that we have a wow this is also amazing because if you know a spring you know that uh, like sometimes you can write integration tests with like these spring tests but sometimes you just want to test the layer in isolation and here we actually want to just test the repository so it understood and it's suggesting to use data jpa test annotation that is very good let's just copy the whole code here so we can read it better okay so as you can see it found out that we have a find by status method here 
and it's only trying to test that. But there is more because uh, this repository, as I told you before, has all the CRUD methods that are necessary, but it's just the case that uh, Copilot didn't get it from this context that we provided. So what we can do is switch back to the previous uh, trick that we learned and provide it with a short comment. Let's say test insert task. And let's see what we will get. Okay, so as you can see easily with a very short comment, it knows how to test that we are inserting a certain task. And this can be continued but by many other, like even it's suggesting me what to write as a comment here, test update task. Now you can see that we will get an update task test. That looks quite okay. Let's just uh, run the test one time and see how the codes are working. So there is an error which is saying unable to find the Spring Boot configuration. You need to use context configuration or a Spring Boot test. This is a known error to me. Probably it's because, yeah, you can see that like the package names here differs with the package names in test. So let's refactor and rename. So this should be playground and then we can have a new package called tasks here and then move this repository also inside it. Okay, so now let's run the test and see if they are working. Yeah, perfect. Now all of them are working. Okay guys, so this video was all about how to give right context to GitHub Copilot so you can get better recommendations. There are many other exciting things that you can do with GitHub Copilot or any other LLM model or AI pair programmer. But in my opinion, this is the key thing that we talked about it today, how to give additional context to it so you can get the best answer out of it. Hopefully now that you learned this, you can go and experiment yourself with Copilot and see what else you can do with it. As always, please like and subscribe for more content like this. See you around.